Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Today's episode of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by our bonus packages. Please go to MikeO'MaraShow.com and click on the bonus banner. You'll get access to all of our bonus content, and even better, you'll be helping out TMOS. So please, quit sucking, and we thank you. Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Luke Bryan, wishing you a very happy Halloween. Boo. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeO'MaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Rob, with your obsessive compulsive person, you are not going to play that for the rest of the year. No, you just, you just until Thursday. You have this obsession with Luke Bryan and your hatred for him and not play it at the beginning. What is, what, why did you play that? Why? Tell me why. Because America is excited because Halloween's coming up. Okay. I get to give out Thank candy. You. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, everybody. You can't, uh, welcome. You can't pull the audio and use it once. Oh, yeah. You have to well, use it at least four times. Exactly. Oh, okay. uh, another day, another bus tobacco. Uh, oh, no. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, today I was on the uh, phone with the uh, assistant principal, and uh, I called the supervisor of the transportation department, and uh, nothing's going to happen. I know, I know the culture. Nothing's going to yes, happen. Uh, right. But anyway, more on that later. Uh, we'll have plenty of time to talk about this, but we have... We are blessed with a longtime friend of this show and a very, very special guest and uh, a guy that I've admired for a very, very long time uh, and it, somebody who is uh, really uh, an institution here in, uh, in Washington, D.C. And if you spent any time with him back when he was in his 40s, he should have been <laughs> in an institution. <laughs> Uh, I give you the Bada one, boom. the only uh, sportscaster extraordinaire, Mr. Steve Buckhans, yeah, back with you. us today. Thank you. Thank Woo! you. And he will be joining us. He's paneling for Woo! the show. We are so lucky to have you. We are thrilled. Uh, I got on. I don't know if you had a chance to read my Facebook post about uh, about you and uh, the Wizards. But, I, uh, I did not. I, I have to go back right. and look at that. I, let me just uh, clarify that by saying I'm not. I am on Facebook. I call it the Facebook. Right. It was a fa- it was a Facebook post about you. I heard that. It was not, uh, it was not yours. And the and I wasn't dissing you by not reading it, but I don't I don't actively participate. Okay. Uh, only because I I don't really don't need all my old girlfriends coming out of the woodwork <laughs> to contact me. My wife right. would not be real real kind to that. <laughs> now you waited uh, for like three hundred years yeah. before you decided to get married. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, and uh, you are, yeah. I didn't want to rush into anything, Mike. <laughs> you, you were you were the confirmed bachelor. I was of confirmed was. bachelors for decades. I waited till I was fifty five. Fifty five wow. is when you got married. Yep. Uh, which, How many times know, had you married by fifty five? Uh, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. I was. That's I, true. Right? Yeah, I think you're right. I, 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 in, uh, collectively, now I've been married longer than anybody, just to three different people. That's right. You spread yeah. it out. That's uh, that, but you know, but now I'm happy, and uh, yeah. But enough about me. I don't want to talk about me. No, I want to talk about Steve. Um, let, let me, let me, let's, let's just get it out of the way here. All right. the, the elephant in the room, because uh, yesterday uh, I was reading a story about uh, longtime CBS Sports commentator uh, Gary McCord. Yeah, I saw who, that. Uh, who just man got kicked to the curb. Uh, you know, they didn't renew his contract. That's how they do it in TV. Uh, same thing happened to Steve with the with the Wizards, and I'm. I'm sitting here trying to wrap my head around uh, these suits. Uh, there are, look, there, there is a stadium full of individuals that have had this in the broadcast business done. It's done routinely. It's done poorly. I, uh, and, uh, and the thing about uh, Gary McCord, I have no idea what the particulars are. Just like with Steve, I don't know what the particulars are. All I know is... Uh, when you have a sports guy come out and say, "Yeah, it wasn't uh, it wasn't what I wanted to have happen. I wanted it to be done differently," you hear it constantly happen with me. It's uh, it, it's so frustrating. And you were with the uh, Wizards for a very, very long time, twenty two years. And and then they wow. uh, they you know, they did the same thing to a one a guy that I didn't know personally, but uh, Don Orsillo up in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, where they they whisked in some other uh, new guy in there. And it's frustrating. And then I'm with you know it was I was so delighted to hear that you could stop by and join us today because I'm with the Gary McCord thing. I was thinking about the same deal. On behalf of everybody, the viewers, all of us in Washington D.C., uh, thank you for that run. You did a stellar job with the Wizards. Before that, you were uh, one of the absolute best anchors, sports anchors in Washington D.C. You are uh, you were part uh, at a time 
when it was, I call it the golden age of sports casting in Washington, D.C., mm-hmm. you were part of a golden trifecta yeah. of Glenn Brenner, George Michael, and Steve Buckhans. And, uh, and it just, they just, they'll never get it, Steve. They'll never get it. And, uh, but the fans get it. And I know from the response I got when I posted about your situation, uh, thank you. Thank you for, for that, that great run. And I wish you nothing but the, the very best uh, in your future. That's very That's kind of you, Mike. Um, and I, it is a bit of a mutual admiration society here because back in the day when I used to come on your show, the Don and Mike show, which mm-hmm. uh, was a little easier to get to. It was only about 10 minutes from my house <laughs> as opposed to six Downtown hours. DC. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was a lovely trip in. Uh, yeah. If you like Welcome. being chained to, uh, I mean, it was, but that's DC traffic. But no, um, back in those days, it was, um, it was something. And I refer to that yeah. as well a lot. Uh, you hit it on the head, a golden, golden age of sports casting, because first of all, local TV is not what it used to be. And not it's not even close. And the standards are way down. And uh, it's just a whole different deal. Plus, and m- maybe more importantly, back then with George and Glenn and Frank Herzog and, you know, Tim Brand and all those guys, uh, you got your local sports from the local TV station. You didn't tune exactly. to ESPN. You didn't tune to some of these other uh, regional networks. We covered the Redskins, and the Redskins were big back then, obviously. Right. We covered them, and that's where you got your Redskin news. And you got it from mm-hmm. George, and you got it from Glenn, you got it from us at 10 o'clock. And that's gone away. That'll never be that way again, which is unfortunate. Plus, you'll never see sportscasters like Glenn Brenner or George Michael. Jo- George was a showman. He was yep. a showman, um, uh, an entertainer. Glenn was... The funniest man I've ever seen on television doing local, I, local arguably, TV. to this day. To I this day. Local TV. No, they're, 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 they'll, they'll never be right. anybody like him, and not because he had such uh, such great talent as a sportscaster. He was a genuinely funny and entertaining human being. I mean, genuinely. Whereas he was. He whether was. you sat in a room with him, we used to sit up in Carlisle at Redskin training camp, and while the team was practicing, we'd all stand on the tarmac and, and tell jokes, and Glenn would have you on your knees laughing. And, <laughs> and he was the funniest guy I've ever known, plus just the nicest dude. They were all good guys. We all had a great relationship. Even George, who to some people might, might have been standoffish because he was such a big star, if right. you knew him, he was a good guy. So those two dudes you'll never see again in local television. Now, look, I've been around the country, 30 30 markets. You know, there's 30 NBA teams. I've been to every one of them many, many, many times, watched all the local news. There's a lot of good sportscasters and a lot of good guys that do what they do. Right. But there will never be those two. And having said that, we have to give all credit, really, to what you see on TV today to Warner Wolf because Mm -hmm. he started – he started everything right here in Washington. And all of this, you know, you know, he used to know the, you know, the bang, boom, get out of here, stop it, boo, you know, boo of the week, all that stuff. Let's the, go to the video Let's go to the tape. videotape. What you see today is in some way, shape, or form Warner Wolf. Chris Berman was a Warner Wolf clone. Yeah. He, he grew up watching Warner Wolf when Warner left here to go to New York and right. then came back uh, after Glenn Brenner died. So, um, you got to give all the credit to Warner for what you see on TV today. But in terms of local sportscasters, Glenn and George, uh, and I was I was really blessed to be a part of that that group covering, as you said, the golden age of sportscasting. Absolutely. Because it's not never going to be the same, just like the Redskins have gone, you know, where they've gone in 20 years, two decades. It's a shame. Yeah, there are parallels there. Um, yeah. So with your career, it was local sports, then on to a uh, long-term uh, job as the voice of the NBA team here in Washington, D.C., the Washington Wizards. And uh, because I am out of market now, and I said this on my post, and because I'm not a basketball guy, I'm a hockey guy, I, uh, I didn't know until uh, like a few weeks back that, uh, that you were not going to be doing those games anymore. And I always just assumed you were going to be there uh, forever. And I saw the post and I said, oh, God, I didn't realize. And as opposed to doing the stand-up thing, which would have been to reach out to you personally, I posted publicly on my Facebook page about <laughs> it. And I told Rob to book you on the show so we could get you in here because yeah. I wanted to hear about uh, the situation. And on the heels of this happening to uh, Peter Costas and uh, – 
and, and, and also Gary McCord at CBS. I think it's a fresh story uh, to bring you in to talk about, you know, what it is. Um, just briefly, my situation, the greatest frustration I will always have about leaving a long-term gig at a broadcast outlet uh, was just the way they do it. And I don't know, Steve, what it is with broadcasting executives where the courage seems to kind of go uh, by the by. I don't know how, what your are, situation was Are like, we allowed but, to, you, to, to use curse words on this? As <laughs> many as <laughs> yeah, you we'll like. We'll edit it out. We'll yeah, edit yeah. it out. Yeah. 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 Uh, a friend of mine, uh, my, my counterpart, uh, a friend of mine who does games in Atlanta, uh, ha- had sent me a, a text and he said, sports broadcaster, greatest job in the world, in the world's shittiest business. Yeah. <laughs> and that, yeah. that yeah. S- says it to a T. I mean, that is it right there. A whim, um, a whim. It can be a whim of some guy that's in the right chair. Absolutely, that can that can make a call. It was absolutely, done to, you know, or silo up in uh, in Boston. It happened to you, and I was, uh, I was so bummed out because there's a, I, it's just, it's just, it doesn't make sense outside of, I, I can trivialize it to say guys justifying their existence, and it always seems like it's some sort of move that's going to bring in. The, the latest flavor, and right. it just doesn't, uh, you know, if you look back at the history, and I want your thoughts on this, you look back at the history of guys like uh, Harry Carey, Ernie Harwell, people that, uh, you know, uh, Jack th- Buck, that did it for Jack Buck, the yeah. guys that, Vin Scully. that is a business where it's just don't F with it, yeah, don't, don't mess it. with it, yeah, mm. that's, you know, that's the most puzzling thing, the, the two most puzzling things, and I'll address the one you just mentioned first, is that, um, as I said before, there's there's 29 other guys that do what I do in the NBA. Right. It's an exclusive T- club. TV play-by-play. Then there's 30, other, 30 guys that do radio as well, and then there's the color commentators. But there's 29 other guys who do what I do, and they're all really, really good at what they do. I mean, they are, they are um, outstanding professional play-by-play guys. And when you do it for a long time in, in a city, and – you make an impact in that city. For me, it's been 35 years in this city because, right. as you mentioned, 14 years at the Fox TV station mm-hmm. before the Wizards. Uh, and you develop a following, as you did on the radio when you were mm-hmm. on the, with the Don and Mike show, a huge following, and people loved you guys uh, and heartbroken when you weren't on the air anymore. Uh, I can understand how people feel about this. So you have these 29 other guys that do what they do. And this is what I said to the fellow that purportedly made this decision for me at NBC Sports Washington. I said, listen, uh, with all due respect, um, nobody is going to, in your position, is going to go up to someone like Mike Gorman in Boston or Mike Breen in New York or Ian Eagle in Brooklyn or Mark Zumoff in Philadelphia, or Eric Reed in Miami, or Bob Rathbun in Atlanta. Uh, you could go on and on, and I could name all 29 other play-by-play guys. Right. Nobody's going up to these guys and saying, hey, you know what? You've been here 25, 30, 35 years. I think maybe we're going we're gonna to take a different look at the, at the broadcast. I think maybe we're going to maybe restructure or... Mm-hmm define the culture in a different way those guys would look at that person and say get the f out of here you ain't do it. that ain't happening i mean that's what they would do exactly now right. i thought i might have been in that position but i wasn't right uh right. and and to your point it shows you how one person or maybe a couple of people can change the course of your career can mm-hmm. now look i've been in the business for 45 years i got into it in 1974 in radio in college wow i didn't know you've been doing it that yeah long. Wow. and um and this is the first person that's derailed me so i mm-hmm. worked at five tv stations harrisonburg virginia chattanooga tennessee nashville tennessee atlanta georgia and then dc at the fox station and then the wizards if would you want to count that as another station Mm-hmm. And this is the first time I've been derailed. So it wasn't a bad run 45 years. But still, no, the point I was trying to make was that when you're a professional play-by-play guy uh, in the NBA or whatever sport you're in, and you've been doing it a really long time, to your point, you don't normally mess with that because you've, you've achieved such a, um, a status in the market and a following. And you can see from the reaction from people on social media that right. – 
It's, know, a, it's a franchise following. Yeah, yeah, it is. And Scott Van Pelt did a great story on this uh, on ESPN. Mike, if you ha- didn't see it, you should look it up. You may okay. only be able to find the transcript. Uh, I don't know if you can find the video, but at any rate, he has a show every night at midnight uh, that's very popular. He's a very smart guy. And I'd like to say I taught him everything he knows because he was my intern at Channel 5. (laughs) So uh, we're very close friends. And we've had some great people come out of D.C. I mean, Gus Johnson was my intern at Channel 5, and he does a lot of big-time sports. So Scott, uh, when he found out about this, went on, and he does a thing at the end of his show called One Big Thing. And it's something that impressed him that day, and he calls it One Big Thing. And he devotes, I don't know, maybe five minutes to it, which is a lot of time on TV. And right. when, when we discussed my situation, he said, I'm doing a one big thing on you tonight. And he did it. And it was amazing. And he oh, pointed wow. out, you got to see it. And he pointed out that, listen, these when you grow up with someone's voice, I mean, I get people that come up to me that say, man, I was, I was 10 years old when I started listening to you. You know, I'm 32 now. I'm a grown man. Mm-hmm. And you're all I know. So when you have that, and uh, and it's taken away from you as a listener or a viewer or as a fan. Uh, it it hurts you, man. You, you I mean you grow up with these people. I grew up with Jim Carvellis calling the Bullets games, and then right. you know, and then Frank Herzog and and these guys. And so uh, it does hurt you. So that that being told, I was no longer welcome there. Uh, was was hurtful because I'd like to think I was still at the top of my game calling these games i oh, absolutely hadn't no, slept I or anything like that yeah, so absolutely. so it was one one or two people's view where they didn't like me enough now i've mentioned i've mentioned the owners as well uh ted leonsis uh because listen i i try sometimes to to point this out or educate the viewers or the listeners about how this whole thing works we yeah the, the whole sports casting game right. we, right? we, we yeah. saw this in baltimore with john miller the mm-hmm. best baseball announcer there is. Bar none. Bar yeah, none. Bar none. The best. Mm-hmm. Wasn't enough of a homer. Peter Angelos fired him, let him go. Right. Mm-hmm. That's hardly possible, but it happened. Same thing similarly happened with Mel Proctor. Same thing happened with Marv Albert in New York. He mm-hmm. was too critical of the Knicks, and their owner got rid of him. Well, right. if you can get rid of Marv Albert who is mm-hmm. synonymous and legendary in New York as any sportscaster there is, then it right. can happen to anybody. The point is that the owners make the final call. Now, they can tell you that they don't, and that's a bunch of crap. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I drew this analogy, and Mike, you'll appreciate this. If this same guy had come up to Ted and said, you know what, we're – I'm, I've only I haven't even been here two years, but I'm thinking about maybe making a change with the hockey announcers. I'm thinking about maybe maybe we want to go in a different direction. I don't know about Joe B or Locker. Maybe we want to go in a different. You don't think Ted would have looked at him and said, uh, "I don't think that's happening." You mm-hmm. can leave the room now. Right. Okay. Right. So that's all. Right. That's all. <laughs> so so the point is, somebody didn't want me. And sadly, sadly, the owners didn't want me enough or went along with whomever made the decision. And that that's the hurtful thing. Then the number two part of this is the way it happened after 22 years by them telling me that the door was still open so that I couldn't say a final goodbye on our last broadcast last season and right. then string it along for four and a half months. That's the courage factor yeah, right before now. That's they, where uh-huh. they, they didn't have the balls to let you know exactly what was in their plans. Right. And, uh, well, that, and I think there, there, there was a reason behind that, and I believe— Terrified of it. Well, they, they didn't want me to say anything on the air. In fact, I was instructed a couple of times uh, before I went on the air during the whole process, after it was announced that they weren't renewing my contract, that— um, Please, you know, don't don't say anything crazy or you're not going to talk about your contract or whatever. And, right. you know, and I was like, dude, I've been doing this for 22 years. Yeah. I'm in this market yeah. for 35 years. I built a reputation. Right. You think I'm going to go on the air and trash all of this? Yeah, uh, that shows uh, me what they know about you. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, they they yeah. didn't know anything about me. And right. that's that's right. hurtful. So to go out after t- 22 years of living and breathing bullets basketball um, and go out with zero fanfare that that's the second part of this that's the most hurtful thing 
Uh, when I was reading the article about uh, Gary McCord yesterday, who uh, similarly was in a situation where they did that after after an illustrious career, and I think I forgot who it was that said this to McCord that said, "Hey, are you kidding? This is the network that fired Walter Effing Con- Cronkite." Right, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. 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 It happened. It's just so it's sad. It's it, a, it, it's, it, a, it's a drag. It's, it's a horrible. It, it, yeah. it can be a horrible business. I, you know, I'm asked like you probably have many times to speak. In front of classes and things like that, we I have, let Rob do it. <laughs> it's a good idea. But I say I'm him. You say him. yeah, yeah he's hi. proxy. Yeah, I am. <laughs> and uh, and I do this. I used to do it a lot. And they'd bring classes into the Capital One Arena, AU and GW and Georgetown, and sp- I'd speak to these. And then I'm not good at it because <laughs> I'm not good at it, Mike, because I tell the truth. Right. I, I don't tell these kids everything they want to hear which mm-hmm. is you can be anything you want to be in the world. Just you can be do anything you want to do. Well, not in this business you can't because right. if one person doesn't like the way you look, thinks you're too fat, thinks you're too thin, thinks your eyes aren't right, thinks your color's not right, thinks whatever, your gender's not right, you don't get the job. When you yep. applied for a job back in the day and you sent out a three-quarter inch tape, which I probably sent out 70 of them, Mm-hmm. and maybe got back three, uh, the news director sticks that tape into a machine, takes a look at you, and in 10 seconds decides yep. whether you're getting the job or not. And right. then that tape goes into their file, and they keep it and mm-hmm. use it. Um, so that's how that works. And I, and I try to tell these kids this, and it's not good because that's not what they want to hear, and that's not what the teachers want you to tell them. But the fact of the matter is that it just uh, it, it can be a really nasty business. It's a great bit. It's a lot of fun. It's all we know how to do. Oh, it's so much fun. It's, it's what so we much do. Fun, but it, it's the worst part. And I've always said that when the microphones are on, that's where, when it's a gas. Uh, exactly. And, and that's when the that's when the fun really happens and all the stuff around it. Uh, you know, with this little world that we've created with our show now, uh, you know, I, I, I love it so much because uh, we're not burdened with the same type of layers that yeah. we uh, had to deal with it's in, a great in thing. corporate radio so it's uh you know for on, on behalf of the fans and we we have to break but i when we come back um we'll get an update on on what your plans are what you want to do uh and uh and we'll continue on with the show we're here with steve buckants longtime voice of uh your washington wizards and before that i'm a fox affiliate here in washington dc and uh it's great and i from the bottom of my heart i thank you for your candor about this because there are a lot of people that uh that wouldn't do that and uh and i i just i i enjoy hearing that and Thanks. putting a you know putting a real story behind uh, well, i'm 64 happened. years old mike and it, uh, i'm not moving to cleveland so <laughs> did, you know. oh, come on uh, we'll take a break come back with uh, the mike o'mara show everybody hey. it's the mike o'mara show you can listen to the mike o'mara show at www.mikeomarashow.com stay tuned Standing entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Michael Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. I'm going in there. Bring me that candle. No. no. Yes. Love is the only thing that can save this poor creature. And I am going to convince him that he is loved. Even at the cost of my own life. No matter what you hear in there, no matter how cruelly I beg you, no matter how terribly I may scream, do not open this door or you will undo everything I've worked for. Do you understand? Do not open this door. Yes, Doctor. Nice working with you. Uh, uh. (laughs) Let me out. Let me out of here. Get me the hell out of here. (laughs) What's the matter with you people? I was joking. Don't you know a joke when you hear one? (laughs) Jesus Christ, get me out of here. Open this goddamn door. I'll kick your rotten heads in. Mommy. Nine. (laughs) Hello, handsome. You're a good-looking fellow, do you know that? People laugh at you. 
People hate you, but why do they hate you? Because they are jealous! Look at that boyish face. Look at that sweet smile. And listen to me. You are not evil. You are good! <laughs> it's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara, Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana. And now, from his office chair, here's Mike. From the Podcast Village Studios in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., this is the Mike O'Mara Show. The Mike O'Mara Show, or TMOS to our friends, is a worldwide podcast and radio show with a loyal following of listeners. If you're new, sit back, relax, prepare to be entertained. For you long-timers, thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much. I didn't print the new cities yet, so I'm not going to read them today. And I'm short not going to reread Innsbruck, Austria, Colonial Beach. I know Wednesday, Short Wyoming. Pump is in there. Short Pump, what? Short Pump where? Virginia. Richard. Down by Richmond. Yeah, exactly. Right, Short Pump go. Mall. I'm from Short Pump. Y'all want to come by sometime? And, <laughs> That's right. Rob Spiewak, we'd like to bring you down to Short Pump. You sure got a pretty little bald head. Like <laughs> oh, dear. Now, unless you just drop them panties. <laughs> Get them right off. <laughs> Would you agree the greatest football coach in the history of uh, football coach voices with a – who's the coach of the uh, – the LSU Tigers. Who's the uh, the guy? Do you know the head coach of the football guy? The guy that, that, that I see him yeah. interviewed every week. And yeah, well, like there, you go down south, there's a bunch of them, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> there's a bunch of them. <laughs> Our uh, show today brought to you by Third Love. Yes, Steve, that's right. They wanted me to impress you, so I'm going to do a bra commercial right now. Nice. Yes. <laughs> if you need a bra, look no further than Third Love. You'll get a perfect fit guaranteed thanks to Third Love and their Fit Finder quiz. How do they Just fit, answer. Mike? Are they good? <laughs> okay, thank you, Steve. <laughs> Just answer He's for try Hey, bud, you know what? You know, don't don't you waltz in here and screw up my living. Uh, just answer a few simple questions online and you'll find your perfect fit in 60 seconds. Plus, more sizes than most other brands, including signature half cup sizes. Oh, this nice. is harder than I thought it would be to do. And you can try it on at home. Third Love bras feature lightweight, super thin memory foam cups. They actually mold to your shape. Also, straps that don't slip. Tagless labels mean no itching, plus the perfect fit promise. If after 60 days you don't love it, return it, and Third Love will wash it and donate it to a woman in need. Third Love supports charities in their local San Francisco Bay Area and across the United States. So far, Third Love has donated over $15 million in bras. Carla loves hers. You're going to love your Third Love bra. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now, they're offering our listeners 15% off their first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash TMOS right now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash TMOS for 15% off today. Mike, I want to apologize funny. for that. It could have been a Peloton ad. I was just saying, <laughs> you know, it's just, we, have it's a broad, funny, you know, we have a broad you, audience. No pun intended. Yeah, I know. You Easy get an no. old friend yes. in here, and yes. some things you don't even think you don't you think about. And then I'm looking at him, and I'm sitting there going, I gotta do this stuff. That should be um, its own its own segment. <laughs> oh no! When we were setting up, and you know, he had a marvelous uh, list of things on his rider that he required. And yes. Steve said, uh, "Yeah, we'll need a bra ad." <laughs> yes, <laughs> we'll need a mass, bra appeal. Ad. mass appeal. Mass uh, appeal. Uh, so they anyway, uh, welcome to the show, Steve. We're glad you uh, could uh, drop by today. And uh, we were talking about. Thank you for your honesty about uh, the yeah. situation here. And uh, you know, I think you're aware of uh, how. Many people love you in uh, the market of Washington D.C., and uh, we're we're glad that you uh, could come by today. What uh, what are the future plans? What do you think? I mean, uh, you know, I I'm I'm sure you're richer than Jesus. You could do whatever the hell you wanted to, but do you want to do you want to move on or do you want to pack it in? I mean, uh, you're in an age where you get some options and you figure out what you want to do. What's on what's on the horizon? Yeah, no, I'm I'm not ready yet to um to give it all up. I'm 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 actually doing a football game in a couple of weeks. Uh, in, down in Virginia, and I've got a basketball game, a Georgetown game lined up this month or next month as well. So I've been talking to ESPN and Fox and some of these other networks about Glad do, to hear doing that. stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we'll see. Uh, there's other options as well. Um, okay. Uh, everybody keeps saying to me, you need to do a podcast. You need to do a podcast. You do. Oscar, do I need to do a podcast? I, I, that's see, as a man who um, <laughs> you talk about being derailed after what four, uh, thirty-five years in the market, um, I didn't experience, and I have not have not uh, as much success as Mike or yourself. And as a younger broadcaster, I was 
derailed uh, as a team for roughly, I would say, every two to three years. Yeah. So <laughs> when you live that <laughs> life yeah, of uh, fight or flight and mostly flight, you're always <laughs> looking for the next fight. Sure. And um, I think through that iteration, that's how Podcast Village came around. Yeah. And you talk about a built-in audience. Now, this show came about. Yeah. Oscar came yeah. up to me, Steve, and uh, I remember when we, you know, Oscar and I uh, were on WJFK and got the axe at the same time when they made the uh, format uh, flip to sports. And when Sam Rogers, the uh, the cluster head, wanted to get, uh, you know, LeVar Arrington into the mix yeah. and uh, bring him in. He was a Penn State guy. You talk about one guy. Yeah, uh, being your man. I should have known. Yeah, I had one lunch with the guy scheduled right before they went. Yeah. Before they chopped that head off. And I remember he's 35 minutes late for the lunch. You know immediately. The, guy, the dude's <laughs> not 35, good. Yeah. Yeah, 35 minutes late for lunch. I'm sitting there, you know, I'm sitting at Artie's over in Fairfax going, yeah. ba do ba do ba do And yeah. then uh, and then I, I got another gig at a uh, station over uh, where Q, Q107 used to be, The Edge. And I remember they made an announcement that the new market cluster head was going to be Sam Rogers. Katie Powers, who you know very well, yes. our good friend Katie, she texted me when she read this. She said, I'm so sorry, Mike. Oh, <laughs> no. <she> know, <laughs> guy did it to me twice. One guy. You talk about one guy. Yeah. And I got to ride up in the elevator with him a few times and uh, make it. As uncomfortable as oh, possible. Oh, absolutely. Before. What have I always told you? You should have gone to Penn State. <laughs> but Oscar, <laughs> what Oscar rolls up to me and says, uh, you, you got to do a podcast. I think that was almost yes. a direct quote, yeah. Oscar. And, you looked and at I me said, and podcast. Said, I said, no, I'm not, gonna, I'm not in my mother's basement. Yeah. Mm. I'm not. What is going on? And then uh, 10 years later, we have our 10th anniversary of this entity coming up. Congratulations. This entity, this is this allows you to do what you can you imagine on regular broadcast radio getting on and doing over twenty minutes of you just saying what you wanted to say right. no, it's uninterrupted can't it do doesn't it. happen Couldn't you can't do, do that no and uh, you know we get the commercials in we get everything covered but Oscar said that to me and uh, it's a wonderful I I would tell Oscar and I think he would probably agree with me and I'll ask you. I think we need so much more professionalism in this world. Yeah. It's such an opportunity to get people. So when Steve says, maybe I'll do a podcast, you know, especially right here, you know, in uh, in our little family. Uh, well, he doesn't like to drive, though, but he can do it from his house. <laughs> yeah, for uh, he wants the in the thing, world. But it's fun. Yeah. And, and more and more people are doing it. And uh, Oscar's more of an expert on it than I am. There are, it seems like a little cream is rising to the top. In our little world of podcasts, uh, would that be agreed. accurate? And, and really what it comes down to is uh, Mike talks about content control and um, what you can and cannot say. So there are even people that are in the in industry that come here that have a different outlet that they need to fill. And that's whether it's creative or it's a different subject matter. Um, it really allows you that latitude to uh, check that box, but also – Take what you've built and the time you put into the city and let the listeners or the viewers decide what they want to consume. Mm. It's their choice. Yeah, and it's so liberating. And it's been, uh, you know, and the flexibility, obviously, of doing it where I wanted to do it uh, is is magnificent. Uh, it, it's just, uh, it, it's something where if you're ever interested, I uh, you'd be great for it uh, because you're not just a guy. You know, there are a lot of guys that do what you do. You know, uh, you know, not, I'm not going to begrudge anybody. Okay, right. I be, uh, but you know what? You get Kenny Albert in here, maybe it's not going to work as well. I just, uh, I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm just making a little joke here. Hi <laughs> there, how are you? It's cool. Like, I don't know might, what you mean, you, Mike. I never miss the Sam Rosen podcast. <laughs> thank you very much. Now, stop. <laughs> Behave yourself. Now, this is, let uh, me ask you though: Was yes. the first question you asked? Oscar, because this was my first question, can you make any money off of this? It, You know what? It, the, the thing about podcasting, there are so many people out there that do it. There are not a lot of people that do it well. And that is uh, the advantage, and I'll give you an honest answer to that. The advantage I have is that I did have 48 to 50 markets around there. You also have a name that has been out there in uh, the great heartland. And so, you know, that is, it's always individual. The vast majority, no. I would say, no, you can't. You, you build that. But somebody with, uh, you know, with a name that gets into this and sets the table and sets up the situation in a correct way can, can do it. It's hard. It's hard. I got to mm -hmm. be honest with you. It's very, very difficult. We piggybacked on that we are blessed with a passionate amount of bra wearing listeners uh that uh, <laughs> including yourself <laughs> including myself thank you that's the second fat joke but i will tell you it's it's 
fantastic. <laughs> yes, I'm fat. And uh, by the way, for the listeners that will be coming to the live show in Las Vegas, Nevada, let me just say, yes, I'm fat. I'm fat, and uh, you know, later this week I will you're probably be heading fat. out. You're not fat. I'm, First I'm, of all, you're big, and that yes, helps in your you. golf game because you crush the golf ball. Yeah, I, I'm enjoying thing. it. Uh, although little guys that I play with, I play with this little guy, might be like close to 70 years old, <laughs> that they uh, call him the slasher, and he hits the ball ridiculously. He shoots his uh, age, long. right? Yeah. Oh, they all do. They all do down here. It's insane. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Now you're doing a you're here. doing a live show in Vegas. We're doing a live show, two live shows, sold out shows in Las Vegas, Nevada. Awesome. We're going to be uh, uh, on November. Is it fifteenth and sixteenth? Fifteenth and sixteenth. Yes, fifteenth and sixteenth at the Council Chambers Theater from uh, Zappos Corporate Headquarters, uh, with uh, five hundred of our closest friends on Friday night and five hundred friends on Saturday night, and we are looking forward to it. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, you know, I, I'm figuring out what I want to wear. <laughs> can I, I can I wear, just yeah. quickly circle back to the podcast uh, question? Yes, you may. Mr. So, man. so oh, sorry, sorry, Steve. <laughs> um, it really, it really depends on the show. And yes, circle you back. can. And you've got uh, guys like Tony Kornheiser, TK, that are doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just really how you structure the and how you want to structure your program. Mm-hmm. And the hardest part for any podcaster, and, and this is known whether you're in the business or want to get into it, is actual frequency. If you're going to do your show every, every day, do it every day, uh, five days a week. If you're going to do it once a week, do it once a week at the same time. And that chip is not built into everybody except for really broadcasters. That's you can count on them to understand that this is when it's going to happen. This is when it's going to be released. It will go live at a certain point because, as we always talk about, programmers at, at times don't respect the audience. And the talent remembers, hey, the audience is smarter than you think. Exactly. So we can't just shift things around all the time. As long as you keep it honest with the audience and you respect their time as they're uh, really subscribing to your show at a certain time, then it really works. Wouldn't you say that the, one of the key things is that you have to become a habit? Yeah. And that's easy if, like, you know, say- You already Friends, have it built into yeah, your- Friends was on every Thursday night at 8 o'clock, yeah. so you need to tune in. So you need to know that at noon, when you go to the app, the Mike O'Mara show is going to be there. It'd have to be a part of it, yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah you're, and but, habits are important. But you're taping the show. Exactly. Yeah, but but it, this is also being streamed live. And it is being yeah. streamed yeah. live. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So live. This, so this is live, live on, on YouTube. TV. It is. Well, yes. that's interesting because I was on a flight coming back from uh, L.A. where I had to watch the Nats game the other night. It was the game on Friday night, and mm-hmm. I was in the air. And, uh, you know, thanks to the lovely United app, I couldn't uh, couldn't see the game, and they didn't have DirecTV in the plane, which was a killer for five hours. So I purchased Wi-Fi, and then I paid $50 for YouTube TV. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow! You went through the hoops I to see the to. game. I had to. Yeah. Yeah. And Cheaper uh, to buy a ticket. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, come on, airlines, get it together. But you watch the game. I watched it. No kidding. On my phone, on the size of a postage stamp. I swear to you, <laughs> that's how big the picture was. Like the 1940s. So it was unbelievable. <laughs> a little then, little screen. Then I realized that because I had purchased Wi-Fi, I could slingbox the game from my slingbox at home, which it, was a little bigger picture, you know, slightly bigger. Right. right anyway, right. I'm, I'm hoping to get the fifty dollars back, and because uh, <laughs> uh, it was a free trial, or they say it was a free trial. We'll see how free that trial was. And uh, at oh, any rate, uh, but those are the, the disruptors we're yeah, talking so, about. So, so, uh, but yeah, so, but in other words, people will go and and listen to the podcast they, they whenever they want. They, it's, yeah. it's on demand. It's live. Uh, we are blessed to have. Built out this infrastructure here with Podcast Village. It's beautiful. Where you literally have your choice of how you want to distribute your content. Now with two locations in our nation's capital. Even further in D.C. <laughs> yeah. If you want the trip it. to be further, we can do that. Yeah. Did you tell yeah. them what's across the street, by the way? It was, uh, <laughs> have you discussed yeah, we, that, Mike? We, we it was, not it was only my first about landmark this studio. That Let I me said. tell you about it, the way Oscar <laughs> selects his location. Well, first of all. Uh, the, the podcast village is located uh, next to a uh, a ballet training school known as Good Guys, <laughs> and then downtown. Where's the downtown? Lo- <laughs> Thank you. Uh, where's the downtown M- location? Nineteen hundred M Street. Nineteen hundred M Street, which is across the street from 
Camelot. Yes. So you, you yeah, didn't right? play around. You clearly. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, a pure coincidence. Yeah, right. Pure coincidence. Right, well, You've got connections, uh, man. <laughs> we are we are here with uh, with Steve Buckhand. Greatness and, finds uh, us. You still now? Do you still have a place down in uh, FLA? Are you still down, still down in Florida? Uh, no, I have friends there though that I visit okay. regularly. All right. Uh, and, on the other still, side, on in Delray Beach. Oh, Delray, very nice. Yeah, very but nice I love to come to the West Coast too. In fact, got oh. married at the Don Cesar. In St. Pete oh, Beach. Wow, there oh. you go. And Which is beautiful. Come over and hit the egg with Absolutely, me one day. dude. I've Love been waiting for an in, been waiting for an invitation for years. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can meet all the people from Indiana that say, "When did you get back? When did you get back? I don't know when you got back. Come back. Look, Are you back yet? I don't know Steve, when you're back yet. It's Steve Bucky Ants. <laughs> Steve Bucky Ants. Oh yeah, basketball. You know, I'm from Indiana. We have Hoosiers. Uh, uh, anyway, <laughs> we'll take a break and uh, come back with more fun on the Michael Mara Show. And now. Advice from Andrea. Hello, ladies. It's me, Andrea. You're energetic, diabetic. And you deserve to be treated like a queen and to have someone who knows you better than you know yourself. Let's face it, there's only one man who can give you what you need. It's me, Dan the Fan Man. Man. And if there's one thing I know about you females, it's that you love a great fan. If you need a fan, I'm your man. Say that your old fan is rubbing you the wrong way, and I'll make sure that you get rubbed the The right right way. way. Yell up into the sky. Oh, holy Dan the Fan Man. I need a high-quality industrial fan, but everywhere I turn, I only see overpriced fans. And you're my only hope. Like a mythical creature, I will come down from the heavens riding a giant ceiling fan, and your wishes will come true. Ciao, Bella. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. What does Those that even promote? Those are nothing. Those are fake commercials done by interns, and I love them. Uh, welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Joybird. Time to create furniture that matches your own fearless style. With Joybird's endless options to customize, the days of settling for something that isn't quite uh, you are over. It doesn't matter if you crave muted beige or hot pink, or if you can dream it. Uh, Joybird, they can build it for you. Joybird offers a range of kid and pet-friendly upholstery options so that your creations can stand the test of time and the wrath of your furry friends and toddlers. Plus, free fabric swatch kits are available to let you see and touch all the fabrics. I'd like to hear your intern, Gus Johnson, read that. (laughs) Free fabric swatch kits available. (laughs) And our free personal design consultants will help you go from inspiration to creation. Quality handcrafted furniture at a 365-day home trial. Skip the furniture store and bring the showroom home. Sit on it, sleep on it, and uh, break it in. If you don't love your Joybird, return it. Create the furniture that matches your own fearless style at joybird.com slash TMOS. See how Joybird can help you make your dream space a reality today at joybird.com slash TMOS. Go to joybird.com slash TMOS and receive an exclusive offer for 25% off your first order by using the code TMOS. Uh, We're here with Steve Buckhans, and uh, thank you for... uh, Braving the D.C. traffic. What was your total uh, distance and time commitment? Well, distance, uh, according to Waze, was 16 miles. Time was an hour and 20 minutes. Mm. Yeah, there oh, was right. a, okay. a the yeah. delicious wreck on the toll road today. Yeah. And that's yeah. it doesn't happen very often. And the toll road's usually pretty quick. Yeah. Although It sent I, him through Vienna, sent <clears> me through Reston. It yeah, was I mean, a beautiful I, I, morning. I'm not normally on it at 8 o'clock in the morning. Right so on. Yeah. Let me qualify that. But uh, it's usually pretty good. As opposed to 66, with Oi. anybody in this area knows you, you want to stay off that if at all possible. But uh, today was just brutal. And it's just, you know, when you do what we do, Mike, although you used to do it very early in the morning, but right. you didn't have that far to travel because everything was in Northern Virginia mm-hmm. at the time. Uh, and, and I can't help but when I get on the road and I just think to myself, these people do this every day. Absolutely. And, and, and I heart would, goes out to them. Although Mike, uh, it, Mike yeah, does have the advantage because he used to go from Annapolis to Arlington. True, when you live in Annapolis. That's that's a hike, man. Well, then, the biggest difference is when I got a job years later, uh, where I used to do the Arlington thing when we did a morning show at WAVA, and then uh, it was afternoon drive, and by that time, I'd moved to Northern Virginia, so that was nothing. That was nothing. Right. Nothing, nothing is Robert De Niro. It was nothing. The Irishman says it was nothing. Was the commute then, so small that you think De Niro would laugh at it? Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, so... <laughs> Caught me off guard on that. But then when I got a job doing another morning show and I got up uh, in Manass-ass Virginia at like three, uh, 3.45, 4 o'clock in the morning, 
hit the road at 4.30 to be at the station to do a 5.30 uh, airtime. And what had changed in the decade, 15 years since, there was full-fledged balls-to-the-wall rush hour at like 5 a.m. on Route 60. That had never, that would, that had not existed yeah. be- before that. Yeah, people don't, or they don't know around here rush hour, like in the afternoon, starts at around 2 o'clock. Yep, two yeah, or two easily 30. 2 yeah. o'clock. Yeah, yeah. 2 o'clock. One, you could probably, Thursday, Friday, probably uh, by 1 o'clock. Well, Friday's the worst. get worked up. Friday's know? the worst. Uh, yeah, down here I got my own problems, all right? I, I wouldn't give my problems to a monkey on a rock. Monkey yeah. David, on a rock. But at least you, you get to go to you know dinner at 4 o'clock, which is nice. Well, he has that's to. Why, so that's true. when I eat. So tea. true. It's when I He's got to beat the rush. Okay. Got to beat the I, rush. My dinner, my dinner was in my oversized belly at 4.35 yesterday. <laughs> Carla brought it home from the Japanese steakhouse wow. right across where they make the nice little uh, uh, chicken fried yeah. rice there. And uh, and Mike said, Mike, you know, some out there might be saying, Mike, really think it's a good idea to be eating the fried rice? Why don't you just bite me? Why don't you bite me right now? <laughs> so my deal now is because I have, uh, I don't know, it's been a long time, Steve, since we've chatted, but yeah. uh, I have a 24-year-old daughter, I have a 22-year-old daughter, good and Lord. now I have a a young son, a very young son. I am an older father. So I have a six-year-old son who started kindergarten this year. So I do the drill in the morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very this much. This man Appreciate is viral. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Getting you. it done. Uh, Eating dinner so at four. I take him to the bus. And uh, over the last two to three days, the bus situation has become untenable. And so this morning was the same drill. Yesterday, no show. I'm there from, and this what time? The bus didn't show? Little, Busted. Well, yesterday I was out there from 6.35 in the morning till 6.55. They say you should wait 20 minutes. I gave them more than a 20-minute window, and I was gone. So I called. They don't seem to know what's going on. Today I call before I take him to the bus. And Steve so should the know phone. there's an app, a non-functioning app that even there's is a, complicating there's app, things. Yeah. There's an app called Find the Bus that used to work brilliantly, <laughs> and uh, and now it doesn't work at all. You literally see the cheese wagon yeah. getting closer mm-hmm. to you. Uh, I'll make and sure so. to download that. Oh, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. there there, you never know when I'll need a school there's, bus. There's the bus. <laughs> there it is. There's the bus. 5.7 miles away where it's been for like 16 years, just sitting there in the bus lot, just sitting there, just sitting there like that. So, well, I go, so today I call... <laughs> T- today I call the 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 dispatcher as because of later dispatch. in the conversation I right. found it was dispatch and I get the answer. Uh, Hi, I'm uh, Mike Gomera. The uh, bus number six 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 has not shown up yet. <laughs> the and the uh, the dispatcher goes duh 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 all duh puts me on hold. Jeez. I get back on don't duh break down half hour late duh duh duh. I said the duh. here's what here was the quote and because I I pull the whole logic card on this sure. the quote was. The bus will be a half an hour late. It's broken down. The driver hasn't arrived for work yet. I said, if the driver has not arrived for work yet, <laughs> how do you know? How do you know the bus is broken down? <laughs> you don't because you're lying with your culture of incompetence at the transportation. And nobody wants it. By the way, it's accepted. But I called the local news today. I was busy. Did today. you? Oh my god! Called the local news. Talked to an editor, an assignment editor. Which had channel? Nice chat with a uh, wink. Nice, nice. They get things done. Wink makes wink you news. think. Yeah. Chatted with a guy that's been going on for years. So yeah, it, as soon as he says that, I mean, I have, the, I, I used to be in that game a little bit. As soon as sure. he says that, I know nothing's happening. So yeah, it's been going on for years. Okay, thanks for trying. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so we move on. <laughs> then, all right. So flash forward. Then the drill is take my son back from the bus stop. Mrs. O'Mara is getting ready, all polished and ready for skin specialists and stuff like that. And so she said, uh, she's all, uh, she's uh, nice, nice and shiny. She said, didn't come, huh? Nope. Okay, I'll take him. Get a call from Mrs. O'Mara shortly before I'm going to come in here to the studio. She said, you're not going to believe I'm in line at the school. You're not going to believe the bus that's next to me. It was his bus. Oh. Did it beat her it to school? I, it beat her to school. I, I I stayed out there for 25 minutes. How, to get it. But it's broken. They it's, told you I, the bus is broken. I'm out of my mind. Then it's a talk today. I was busy today. Yeah. Busy. Uh, I knew I love, Steve was coming in, but if you if Steve wasn't here, you would have gotten this two hours ago. I love the fact that you, <laughs> you doing, gotten this too. doing the Forrest Gump thing with the <laughs> well, kids, just, you know, yeah, sitting yeah, by the mailbox. Yeah, I know. Well, That's great, man. Yeah, well, my, my life was not a box of effing chocolates today, Steve. <laughs> I was sitting there, and today I am sitting there. Uh, talking to the assistant principal, 
uh, Mrs. Uh, Bertolucci or whatever her name is. Oh, she's and so she good. Says, and she says, to her, she says, oh, you're so screwed. <laughs> you're so screwed with the traffic. You're such a bad boy. Oh, Michael Manor, why are you moving down to that crappy school district? Hey. So I'm <laughs> She says to me, listen, we've heard it. We know it's terrible. That's the culture. It's a culture of acceptance. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the school, fantastic. The, the transportation system, everybody's kind of passing the buck and wiping it. So I, I fired off. Uh, she recommended I fire an email off to her, and then she will pass it along to the proper authorities. But within my email, I gave her and her boss a little eh, that you ought to get a little personal involvement in this thing Ooh. because you can say it's not your thing, but it is because they are supposed to get the kids to school so it is tied together. Whether you like to yep. say it's not or not, you are. If you're going to tell my kid that he's got to have an attendance record where he's going to be there on time, then you have to do what you know you want to do. Mike, Getting you're putting the system on trial. That's right. Putting the system on trial. The whole system. Very, very frustrating. I'm terribly sorry, but I had to get a, I had to get that off my chest. You did. It's, been, it's three. <laughs> it's three days of uh, of dealing with. I it. can't that, believe the broken bus beat Carla to school. That she said it was bus, and she gave the number. I said no. No, you're kidding me. Which means they they lied or they don't know what's going on. Three Either different, one is unacceptable. three distinct lies. Right, right. But other than that, life's going. You great. probably don't know this, Steve, but uh, <laughs> the bus and the bus stop are special in Mike's lives because that's where he met Carla the first time. Stop yes, it! I did. Yeah, when I was uh, hanging outside the middle school, waiting for my uh, oh, current wife. She was a senior <laughs> in high school. Stop oh. it! Yeah. Uh, maybe she was uh, driving the bus. I'm. I'm not. Uh, no, she's actually, uh, if you come down here to West South Florida, as we like to call it, uh, you can get yourself a nice little facial and maybe a back facial, too. Ooh, I've heard That's about a, that. Yeah. Yeah, back facial. <laughs> okay, thank you. We'll stop that right now. Thank you. I know how often you've been on the road, pal. We're going to take a break, and we will come back with Steve Buck and more fun and more thrills on the Mike O'Mara Show. Hi, this is Jimmy Cerrito, the King of the Wings. My world-famous buffalo wings have been. Stop it again! I want you to stop it, Rob. Years. I want to play. Just Before you go on, I want yeah. you. To, I want to set it up for Steve. Okay. So, uh, Steve, this is you know Jimmy Cerrito, Jimmy's Old Town yep. Tavern. In yep. a, so everybody knows Jimmy. Jimmy, like, like totally s housed. Right. This is he after this. he had done a podcast where he had completed most of a bottle of Tito's, and then All they right. asked him to do promos. Thank you very much. Okay, now play. All right. Hi, this is Jimmy Cerrito, the King of the Wings. My world-famous buffalo wings have been winning awards for years, just like the Michael Mara Show bonus show. Wings and bonus show comedy are the perfect combination when you're hungry for a laugh. I'm trying. Buy the bonus <laughs> show, and you can feel like you own your own virtual brick in the bonus show beer garden. It's not a Ponzi scheme. It's real. And it's not terrible. And it's not looking bad for you. Buy the bonus show. What? It'll be okay. <laughs> That's right. Nothing but professionalism. Welcome back to the Michael Mara Show. This segment brought to you by KiwiCo. How would you like to have a subscription box for your kids that helps them change the world? Say hello to a great company, KiwiCo. We love these people. KiwiCo, they create cool projects for kids to make learning about STEAM. STEAM is science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Uh, Michael absolutely loves his, and he gets a new box every month. Each box designed by experts and tested by kids. It has all the supplies you need for that month's project with easy-to-follow instructions written for kids and an educational magazine so the learning continues. And with seven lines to choose from, KiwiCo is great for kids of all ages. KiwiCo, a convenient, affordable way to encourage your children to be anything they want to be. No commitment, and you can cancel anytime. Monthly options start at $16.95 per month, shipping included. Our listeners can go to KiwiCo.com slash TMOS to get their first month free. Every day counts when it comes to making a difference, so don't miss out on this amazing opportunity. Again, go to KiwiCo.com slash TMOS and get your first month free. That's KiwiCo.com slash TMOS, and we thank you, everybody. Uh, we're here with Steve Buckhans. And uh, Steve, a longtime sportscaster here in Washington, D.C., and also the voice of the Wizards for 337 years. That's right. Uh, which was a long a, time. A, a, amazing. All right, let me let, looking back on your, your run uh, with all of it, and I'm not just going to include the Wizards. Yeah. Uh, 
the because I think always to ask somebody that's got a career like yours, it's always an opportunity for me to let our listeners, you know, in on some of the behind the scenes stuff or the great moments that you've had. I think you participated in one in one of my greatest moments at a golf tournament we were at together where you tapped me on the shoulder and you said, that's Carl Yastrzemski in back of you. Yeah. And I oh, turned wow. around and suddenly, uh, uh, you know, with sports stars, I turned into a tiny child again. It was like, oh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, very, very cool. But you, you had to have, like, amazing times and amazing moments. Are there standout moments when you look back on uh, Yeah, on there run? are some incredible stories that I've amassed, not only the 22 years with the Wizards, but back in the day at Channel 5 and then all the other TV stations I mentioned earlier. Uh, some of them, many of them, not uh, ones that you, you finally remember because yeah, right, uh, right. they were uh, very stark and uh, eye-opening. The very first one was in my first job in uh, Harrisonburg, Virginia, the 196th television market in the country out of about 212 at the time. Are you a Madison grad? And, uh, Is that why I, you got correct. started there? Yes, okay. I am. Uh, proudly, by the way. And I had a BS in the communication arts. The BS did not stand for Bachelor of Science. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm on the air. I interned, interned at the local TV station, the only TV station in Harrisonburg, WHSV, ABC affiliate. And I'm doing the sports. They put me on the air as an intern, which was a huge mistake. <laughs> huge mistake on their part. And my, and my best friend, Steve Lealu, who also went to Madison, we both interned at the same time. They put him on the air as well. So he was doing the, the news, and I was doing the, the sports and the weather at 11 o'clock. They had me doing the weather because I've got my that. pilot's license, so I, I knew a little something about meteorology, enough to fake it anyway, in Harrisonburg where there were six That's people awesome. watching at 11. So I, back in the day, uh, you would take a look at the, at the, um, co- at the copy machine, and then not the copy machine, but the, the printout. They don't even have them anymore, but it would actually... The teletype, The right? teletype. It actually right. printed out stories. The wire. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, the, the, the wi- wire the, service, I, yeah. I had them. I remember yeah, that. Sure. The wire service. That's so how you got that, your information. That's how you got your news. There that's was no it. other it was like, way to get it. That was it. And you watched it print out. I know Marconi actually had the same one I used. And That's amazing. You know, I look back at that, I go, oh my God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, and, you know, I tell these kids in these classes, there was no internet. There was no... Cell phones. There was none of right, that. No right. computers. You know. So uh, I'm at the teletype, and I'm and I'm and I'm. Just, I see a story printing out, and it says, and I'm read the beginning of it. It says Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the Los Angeles Lakers, has announced he will play the remainder of his career in Los Angeles. Beautiful, perfect. I ripped that thing off. Uh, there was more to the story. I didn't read it, but I you know I was ripped it off. And I made a copy of it. I gave it to our director who directed the news, and I said, this is one of the stories I'm going to read. Now again. No teleprompter where I was at this station. Right. Everything was on hard copy and all of that. My buddy Steve is sitting next to me. He had just read the news, and now I'm doing the sports. And this, I get to this story. And this is broadcast 101, lesson that I learned. Read your copy all the way through. At least <laughs> once. At I'm least Ron once. Burgundy. So, uh, listen, that movie is so true to life. I can't tell you because that's exactly when I came up in the mid 70s. It's exactly when when the Ron Burgundy thing happened. It's all true. You know, it's not anchor lady. It's anchor man. So uh, so I'm reading this story. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the Los Angeles Lakers, has announced he will play the remainder of his career in Los Angeles. Now, I read the rest of the story on the copy. The Lakers, who were defeated in last year's NBA championship game by the LFT teachers, an official of a parent organization, I was stunned. They had changed stories on me in (laughs) mid-sentence. Oh, no. (laughs) And I hadn't read it through. (laughs) <laughs> and I saw the word officials, officials of a parent organization, and I thought officials, basketball. I kept reading. Right. It kept getting worse. Uh, I looked at my friend Steve, who's next to me off camera, and he's looking at me like, <laughs> he's in horror that I'm reading this. And I kept reading and reading, and finally I, I realized I was into another story completely with nothing to do with basketball. And I just looked up and I said, AP, bad copy, got me again. So I go home. <laughs> That's good, though. You cover yeah, it. You're yeah, honest. Yeah, it wasn't, you're, quite, you're wasn't quite that smooth. wasn't <laughs> quite that smooth. Got it. I right. go home, and my roommates, 
Ron and Jim, who were watching, they always watched me on TV. Uh, I get home and they say, looked at me and they said, man, those LFT teachers, pretty tough last year, went all the way to the NBA <laughs> championship game. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, you're a young guy. So that was you know? that was a bad one, and this is this next one is equally as bad. I'm now right. in Washington, okay, and I'm doing a basketball college basketball game on HTS Home Team Sports, which is the you know the predecessor the predecessor of CSN mm-hmm. and and right. NBC Sports Washington and all of that. And I'm doing the game at AU, and I'm doing the game with Doc Walker, who is a Redskin tight yeah. end and has his own radio Walker, show right. here, very popular here. And he's he's the color commentator, and I'm the play by play guy. And at halftime, I am scheduled to interview the president of the American University, Dr. Benjamin Ladner. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So halftime comes. And Doc gets up, and he's glad-handing everybody, shaking hands and stuff like that. And I'm sitting there waiting for the president to show up. And my my um, uh, assistant that helps us out, a stage manager we call him, had walked off as well. So I'm just kind of sitting there by myself waiting for the president to come up. Here he comes, put the headsets on him. We sit down, and we come back from break. And I say, uh, halftime here in Washington where AU leads GW 43-42. to 42. Uh, Steve Buckhantz with you, and I'd like to introduce now the president of the American University, Dr. Benjamin Ladner. And this guy looks at me, and he mouths the words, I'm not Dr. Ladner, Buck. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> he mouths those words. He doesn't say them. And I looked at him for what felt like about three hours. <laughs> it was actually about 10 seconds. Yes. And I looked at him, and I could not bring myself to say to him, who are you? Yes. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Now, now the, the guy that was directing, the producing the game is a friend of mine who went to American University but didn't bother to say to me in my ear, get that guy out of there. That's not the president. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so luckily, after about 30 seconds, we go to a wide shot. Okay. Now I take off my headsets. He takes off his. I look at him and I whisper in his ear. Who are you? <laughs> and he says, I'm Jason Shrinsky. And that's all he needed to say. Now, what had happened was he was a guy that I had sort of known. He was a, a lawyer Isn't in town. He's an agent. He's an, Isn't agent. He an agent. That's correct. He's an agent. I know agent. Jason Shrinsky. That's right. I know that name. A big yes, time agent. Yes, yes, you do. And that's oh why he came God. up to me. He just came up to say hi. Uh, and I, they put a headset on him? <laughs> there was nobody else there. I put the headset hey. on him. <laughs> Shrinsky would have thought that he was being interviewed. Yeah, That's he, the way he Shrinsky, was, right? Yeah, yeah. He, would have, he and, had that kind of ego. And guess right? what, Mike? He was yeah. interviewed after that. <laughs> because all he needed to say to me was his name. And he said, I'm Jason Shrinsky. And I said, great. Put the headsets back on. And I said, joining us now is Jason Shrinsky. And Jason, what do you think about this AU basketball program? Well, at the time, Chris Knocky was the head coach. He says, oh, yeah. well, I think. A classmate yeah, of mine. I think they're doing a great job here. I think that Steve Yockey is terrific, and I think it, Steve Yockey, <laughs> not Chris now. Yeah. And, uh, and I asked him one more question, and he said, thanks, that's it. And we went to another commercial, and we got him out of there. And then <laughs> Benjamin Ladner shows up, the real Benjamin Ladner, and he sits down tardy. next to me, a little bit tardy, right. and uh, we come back from break, and I say, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'd like to introduce the president of American University, Dr. Benjamin Ladner. There was an imposter here in this seat a moment ago, Dr. Ladner, <laughs> and, uh, but I'm glad you're here now. And so oh, that wow. went, and the same buddy of mine, Steve, who I did the, the news with back in Harrisonburg, now living, at the time, was living in uh, Durham, North Carolina. He was watching on the cable. He was on the treadmill, and he said he fell off the treadmill when I said, <laughs> this is Jason Shrinsky. And, it was just, and we, we still have that on tape. And this, oh, we, that. we have it on tape, and it's funny. That's I love great. that. We're going to take a break. And those are some lowlights. I want some highlights. People right. that you uh, will never forget the uh, being in this market for as long yep. as you have. We'll do that when we come back with Steve Buckhands. And uh, we will have more with him when we come back right here on the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. It's been a strange season so far on Big Football. The outcomes have been rather frightening lately. Listen up. 
Spurlock. <laughs> if you're looking to win big, listen to the Mike O'Mara Show. They have a creature who can help you with your picks. Nitty time. <laughs> Four out of five bookies can't be wrong. Listen for his diamond pick of the week. The Merle and the Caddy. Nikki Diamond, the pride of Perumph on TMOS. Football picks so good, they're scary. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jim Amato. Okay, in and out. Thank you. It's a long one. Thank you very much. Yes, nothing but the best. Uh, welcome back to uh, the Mike O'Mara Show. Uh, congratulations to Zappos for their yes. 20th birthday. Uh, that means 20 years of the absolute best customer service at a selection that is unmatched. Happy birthday, Zappos. Let's have cake, yes? We yes. have cake yes. now. Yes, of course. Yes, cake. No. Yes. Yes. yes, of course. Yes, no. Yes, no, yes, yes. Uh, thanks to over 1,000 trusted brand names, Zappos.com is able to help millions of customers create a long-lasting wardrobe that they love. We're excited to continue our thriving partnership with Zappos, and we celebrate it with our return to Las Vegas for our 10th anniversary. Uh, hosted by our friends at Zappos, our partnership built on listener support. So whether it's footwear, outerwear, anywhere, basically if you wear it, get it at Zappos. We just ask that you support us both by accessing Zappos through our website. Just click the banner. As always, Zappos provides fast, free shipping, free and easy returns, 24-7 friendly customer service, and a 365-day return policy. Thanks to Zappos.com, there's never been a better time to look your best. Thank you, Zappos. See you in Las Vegas. Uh, we're wrapping things up here with uh, Steve Buckhantz, and uh, those were the lowlights. Fascinating. Yeah. Just the idea of live TV and messing up. Uh, I, I love those stories. Brutal. You've interviewed a million people in the world of sports, and you've been part of this. Uh, what are the what are some standout moments, moments that uh, you take away? And you're not done. I want to make it real clear. Yeah. I'm not making it sound like yeah. we're doing your epitaph here. We're not. But uh, but I'm just curious, with that many years behind you, what uh, what some of the highlights might be? Well, I've been fortunate with that many years behind me to, to have interviewed Pretty much everybody that you can think of, whether it's mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali or Jack Nicholas or, um, right. you know, the, the greatest athletes that ever that ever lived. Unlike you, who gets excited when you see an athlete, I there that's kind of passe for me. It doesn't do much yeah. for me. I yeah. get excited when I see like politicians or you know I, I develop friends at the White House, so I got to go down there mm -hmm. and run around and things of that nature. And um, I share one of those stories, although it was the president himself, the first George Bush who invited all of Great the guy. Redskins down after they won the 91 Super Bowl for a barbecue. And he invited the media, which was, I thought, pretty nice, too. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were all down there and <laughs> hanging out with the Prez, which was just surreal, as right. you can imagine. And uh, so we're all out back, uh, not far from the Rose Garden. And all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but a huge thunderstorm rolls in. Now, we're standing under an oak tree, and I'm telling you who was standing under this oak tree. It was the president, and about about 15 feet from him was the guy who carries the nuclear codes or whatever. The, 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 football. the football. The, the football. football. Mm -hmm. He was right. there. Myself, Brad Edwards, who played for the Redskins, right. and his wife, and Charles Mann, and that was it, under this tree. And here comes this huge thunderstorm, and it's a huge tree. And Charles took off running because he didn't want to be standing under a tree during a lightning storm, which is pretty bright. <laughs> yeah. 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 Smart. But we weren't that bright. So we're all standing there, and now there's lightning and there's rain and there's thunder, and I'm standing there literally next to President Bush. And I'm saying to myself, we're all going to be killed by lightning. I mean, this is <laughs> we're all going to be struck. And the headline is going to read, you know, President struck by lightning, others found nearby. You know, that's, that's what's going to happen. And he looks up and he, you know, you know, and you do a better impression than I do, but he looks up and he says, well, you know, we called National Airport. They said, no rain, not going to happen today. You know, that kind of thing. And, and we're all soaked. And a steward comes out from the, from the back of the White House, quote, looks at President Bush and says, Mr. President, Mrs. Bush thinks you should come in now. Just like that. <laughs> wow. Just like that. Mm -hmm. And he said, all right. And he turned around and he walked and we all followed behind him and went right into the, the president, right into the White House. And I ended up getting a fabulous picture 
uh, with President Bush where I'm soaked and he's got a towel over his shoulder, kind of like John Thompson used to wear on the sideline. Right. And uh, it was a memorable occasion, as you, as you could imagine. Uh, got to meet, you know, Bill Clinton and other presidents just by virtue of the fact that we do what we do and right. we live in this city. Uh, but again, uh, all of those great athletes and everything. Michael Jordan, you know, we hung out with him because uh, he played for the Wizards for two years. What and- do you think of uh, what do you think of the uh, the current state of you know it, look it, it, the Nationals? God love them. What a run! Fantastic. Maybe they can pull it out. Maybe they can't. Who knows? Uh, the Capitals, a Stanley Cup championship. But as you know, being in the market as long as you have, and I was in the market a long time too. This will always be. Still, I don't care how many empty stadiums you have. It's going to be a Washington Redskins Redskin Redskin city. Town. Always it's going to be a be. Redskins town. What is going? I mean, do you see? Any light at the end of the tunnel for this? Because uh, I know you keep tabs on yeah. it. What is go- is anything going to happen with this ownership? Will it ever change? I mean, well, I don't it's think the I, I don't see the ownership changing in our lifetime because that right. would be foolish by the owner. This yeah. team is a cash cow. The, right. You know, it's worth right. billions of dollars Absolutely. and the stadium. So he's not going anywhere with it. He's not changing the name. He's not doing any of that. He's got a tremendous organization. Sadly, the brand has been tarnished in the last two decades, and mm-hmm. it's taken two decades to do that. You know, it yeah. doesn't happen overnight. It takes a long time to tear that thing down because 20 years ago or 25 years ago, uh, it was one of the great sports organizations in the world and it's been tarnished unfortunately will will it get turned around you like to think these things run in cycles although this has been a long cycle since right. they last won in 91 uh you like to think it will, will get turned around at some point and i think it probably will but um it just right now there doesn't look like there's a lot of light at the end of this tunnel but uh but who knows you know you know i'm hearing you talk right now and uh you know no offense to our good friend larry but man, couldn't you see him doing that? Wouldn't mm. that be great? Yeah. He's stepping the right great? direction. Sorry. Oh, 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 yeah. oh yeah. Uh, I'd love to hear Buck do that. I anyway, don't see I, any tarnish here. You ever do play by play football? Oh, have you in your career? Absolutely. Are you kidding me? Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm sorry. All right. I didn't know that. <laughs> I was, that was all. I did uh, uh, <laughs> Fox football when it first started in 1994. Wow. Did a Redskin oh, game that year, as a matter of fact. Tampa wow. Redskins at Tampa. Freshman class there, huh? My uh, my color guy was uh, was Merrill Hodge. Uh, okay. And on the first play of the game, Brian Mitchell got knocked unconscious. Uh, he was hit under the chin by a guy named Terrell Buckley and had to leave the game. Now, this was before there was concussion protocol. So right. he left the game. And the guy who's sitting next to me doing the color, Merrill Hodge, had had six concussions. And that's why he was in the booth and not playing anymore. So we wow. had something definitely to speak to. Uh, you know, to speak about because of that play. But, yeah, I did uh, did that. I did Navy football for seven years on the That's radio. That's right. I forgot Navy. Mm-hmm. I forgot Navy. That's it. Fire the person that was supposed to get me that information. <laughs> Fire the man. Embarrass myself in front of Mr. Buckhead. All right, we have one more break. You get your little sounds for Steve? I have sounds for Steve, or if you want to talk to him more, we can always put him in Tupperware I'll until talk tomorrow. To him. I want him to panel. Have a little fun. Play okay, your you know, silly songs. We'll are they, sounds. Way to, way to be confident you in selling, your product. Are you selling your sounds? Are you, you selling or not? That's what I get. Buy That's yourself. what I deal with with you. You know, that was a teed up for you. Yeah, they're fantastic. They're solid. A- no, but no, they kind of suck, Mike. If you'd like to play, <laughs> if you'd like to do that, I don't know. We'll talk to Steve or play Rob. No, sounds we're gonna play we sounds because they're great. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I still, uh, I'm uh, like three decades with this pump. I swear to God, we'll take a break and come He's back loyal. with more fun on the Mike O'Mara show. Yes, it's oh a my, nice trade. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> this is your president speaking. The losers at Mike O'Mara's show require your feedback. (laughs) Needy. They need to be rated by you to validate themselves. Insecure. Example. Tell them that the Yak Shack is an A+. Exaggeration. Give the mailbag five out of five stars. Generous. Assign a 100% to the news you may not need. Lies. TMOS needs a report card. I need to make America great again. Pun. Sad. And now let's round out the promo with some of my best words. Good, strong, taco, sneaky, sweet, thick, crunch, tight, tall, (laughs) milkshake, China, (laughs) superior, fish sandwich, and Putin. Hooray for me. I am your king, misguided. Very sad. <laughs> Welcome back to the Michael Mara <laughs> Show. The following promo written by Rob Spiewak. Yes. What's the matter, Booby? 
Why are you so flipping depressed? Is it because your Uber didn't pick you up in the demilitarized zone? <laughs> to be fair, Audi Field does look like a, it's a lot safer in the daytime with a game going on. Your mistake was going there after hours, after a loss, and after the Uber drivers put on their no thanks auto reply. <laughs> no worries. All you need is a distraction and perhaps a handgun. We can't give you a gun, but we can provide the TMOS bonus show anytime you want. It's a safe zone of comedy that you can depend on with Mike, Oscar, Rob, Maddie, and Doc Severinsen. Ah, I'm, I'm sorry, I mean Pony. Pony. It's a commercial-free, unscripted, no-holds-barred sixth episode of TMOS, and it tastes like chicken. Chicken fingers, to be precise. <laughs> Just click on the banner on our website. That's a promo all for you. I love it. It's, it's all Oscar awesome. all the time. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, you'll be helping TMOS. It's your passport. To the Asport! The TMOS Bonus Show, brought to you by Gifford's Ice Cream and Candy Company. Since 1938, Gifford's has been a Georgia Avenue destination for tasty <laughs> treats and fine service. Treat yourself to a pint of Swiss chocolate sauce, and then gleefully shit your brains out. <laughs> Gifford's Ice Cream was served at Nationals Park starting in 2008, but since 2011 has been unavailable at the stadium, just like Victory. Well, wait a minute. Just like victory, they, they're going to the World Series. Well, though. they're at the World Series, they're but, they, but yeah, they weren't able to win oh, the at most their home. They weren't, yeah, they weren't able to yeah. win at home. Gifford's ice cream. High in butter fat, low in success. Yum. <laughs> and now uh, back to uh, can our, I, uh, our final segment. Can yes. I tell you something about, because uh, I was at Nats Park for one of, the, one of the World Series games. Now, this you may not believe this, but it's true. There's a place there called Ben's Chili Bowl. Yeah. Oh, yes. familiar oh with yeah. Love it, right? of course. Famous. Big, famous big, yes. famous yes. hot dog place no downtown. Sight. I go up there, and I'm there with my wife and my father-in-law, and she just wants chili, really. She doesn't really want anything. just wants some chili, and he wanted a hot dog. So I go up there, and I wait in line, and I get up there, and, of course, it's difficult communicating with the people because they barely spoke any English. But mm-hmm. at any rate, mm-hmm. I said, um, let me have a hot dog, let me have a chili dog, and let me just have some chili, if that's okay. And she shook her head and kind of didn't understand what I was saying. Long story short, you ready for this? Mm-hmm. They don't put chili on a hot dog at Ben's Chili Bowl. Oh, I didn't they know don't, that. Nope. They don't. So you can't get a can't get a hot dog with chili. You can't get just chili. The only thing you can get with chili is a half smoke. Oh, oh. and they don't bend the so rules. So they won't. They, they won't just won't take give you a the cup chili. Of chili. They won't take the chili. They I won't pu- take the chili. I they put on a, the half smoke. I pulled a Peter Fonda on him. I said, "All right, give me a <laughs> hot dog with chili and onions." Hold the onions, hold the bread, hold the hot dog, <laughs> and just give me the chili. <laughs> wouldn't go do for it. Do it? No. no. Really? Wow. Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't and in the put airport chili now, too. on a hot wow. dog. I thought that was the whole purpose yeah. of a that chili a, dog. Mm-hmm. You got a big vat of it to put on the. the wouldn't do it. But the, now I don't so know. If they the, won't. They're only going to put it on a half smoke. At, at least at the ballpark. I don't know what they're rule is downtown at their wow. original location maybe it's different mm-hmm. this is this is the problem them. with dc is but what is that the, they I take know. pride in a half smoke you know what it's not a prideful food <laughs> it's a great great it's a great it's thing a great but, but don't build, but don't build a city on anyway, it anyway i just yeah. i could I, I shook my head i i right. i stopped a couple of folks that worked for the nationals i said i you know I, I i don't know what the deal is here but i couldn't get chili on a hot dog i you thought know, that's I, what ben's chili bowl was you know, as a casual observer, Steve, I think you need a few in the win column. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you really? I really? Yeah. 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 No, no, you're right. God. I, mean, I got really. a lot of problems like that. <laughs> <laughs> they're not they're not big problems. They're not what most people have that call problems. <laughs> these are these kinds of problems. Well, they, exactly. they shouldn't be problems, but they are. I mean, I'm with you. <laughs> they shouldn't you, be you problems. Just say, I just want a cup of chili. That's I'll all pay I want. want for. Yeah. We'll work it out. Yeah, yeah. No, whatever. Yeah. So. Ro- Oscar had no problem getting his 37 beers that he had at the game the other day. No. They put chili in those. No, that's good. I'll sell you two, but not three. <laughs> I'd rather put light, please. Thank you very much. Yeah. Right. Uh, Rob Spiewak, open yes, up the uh, please. vault. There's the sound. Uh, oh, I didn't turn it up. I'm sorry. Now I turned it up. There it is. That's you know, I actually have tape of the lady at the Ben's Chili Bowl. Not the actual restaurant on U Street, but at the stand. Oh, let's hear her. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. You like that? You like that? Yeah. yeah. Because it turned out he really did like the chili. Would have been so much better if you hit it the first time. I saw that. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. Um, Mike, this bothers me is that, you know, always when you sing the alphabet, you go, you know, A, B, C, D, F, G, H, L, M, N, O, P, right? Right. And I think that people are concerned that kids are getting confused thinking that L, M, N, O might be one one letter. Might be. 
So on Twitter, this was trending yesterday, a new version from an organization called Dream English, where they've changed the way they sing the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. This makes me nuts. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q. No, come on, man. Yeah, right? Does it make you nuts? And that sounds like it's infiltrating our society. It's not made in America. No, it's actually the actual recording is from 2012, but it just started trending. You know what I say? Teach your children well. Like Crosby, Stills, and Nash said, if you teach them well, you don't need to change the song. Well, the first thing you should do is teach them how to read properly. Right, Mike? Yes, absolutely. Because in today's youthful generation, and I don't even blame this youthful generation. I blame the teachers because Mm -hmm. they're too young to have taught these kids how to read read properly, how right. to inflect properly. Mm. Everything Mike, sounds the Mike same now. It's, Mike taught me and he continues well, to teach he's me. Every day. He's teaching. Yeah. He's teaching. Mm-hmm. It's, you know what I'm teaching. reading my six-year-old right now, every night? A right. little excerpt from Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. Really? That's You, you want to talk about English, old wow. English. That's old yeah. English. Do you right use there. character voices when you do it? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I use the pirate stuff. Good, you know, good, like, good. Right, That's like awesome. That. Yeah. But when you read it, it is old English. Robert Louis Stevenson mm-hmm. wrote in the in the style of the day. And my kid sits on my shoulder. He doesn't understand half the stuff I'm reading, but he loves it. He's sitting there and it, it gives you an idea of the language. He is all into reading. Oh, he's going to be a, incredible when he after yeah. learning from you. That's going to be fabulous. Absolutely. But you listen to some of these folks who read their own promos. And mm-hmm. it's like, you yep. know what? Hire a professional because it just right. you just mm-hmm. sound like a valley girl. I mean, it's oh. just it's horrible. Yeah, you and I could sit there over a beer and talk oh, about everything God. with that. Where it's like, yeah, be happy, call, be there, there. How about an announcer that knows how to read? Come on yeah. now, yeah. Well, there's freaks. one other thing you always <laughs> need to keep in mind, Mike, is that no matter how big of a star he is or how many how many times he's governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger can still be a dick. And he okay. played a great legendary trick on Sly Stallone when they were neck and neck. Now, he's out now promoting the new Terminator flick, but he goes back to He's a, out there running from his house now. Did you see that? Yeah, oh, that is his house fire, on fire? Fires, yeah. Yeah. And by the way, to our Sacramento and everybody in Northern California and Los the Angeles. entire state, a lot of fans for uh, this show out there, please uh, stay safe out there. My heart goes out to you. What a mm. horrible situation. I mean, we deal with hurricanes down here, but brother, when you look at that, that fire line with the brush oh fires my God. coming out there, unbelievable. Yeah, go ahead. Bob. So when they were neck and neck trying to out box office each other, and it was really, really a, a, a horse race, this uh, is a trick that Arnold played on Sylvester Stallone. So they came to me with this other movie. I forgot what it was called. Uh, Stop or my mother Stop will shoot. Stop or my mom will shoot, exactly. <laughs> I read the script and it was a busy <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. And so I say to myself, I'm not going to do this movie. It's so the then they went head. to Sly, then Sly called me and he says, hey, have they ever talked to him uh, to you about this movie? And I said, yeah, I, said, I was thinking about doing it. <laughs> said, this, this is a really brilliant idea, said, this movie. And so but when he heard that, because he was in competition, he immediately called him and says, look, whatever it takes, I do the movie. <laughs> So wow. we did the movie. Wow. And of course, the movie went major into the toilet. <laughs> so Arnold major tricked. Major into the toilet. He tricked Sylvester Stallone into making a movie with Estelle Getty. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> that is you go. Nah, uh, it's your magic audio yeah. vault. That's it. You gotta, Have gotta, a yeah. great Tuesday, everybody. <laughs> Steve Buckhantz, you are a good man. We appreciate you coming by. Keep Thank us you. informed, and we will be watching you uh, on the tube. And I am delighted that you were able to tell your story today. We love you. You, uh, you know, for all the fans, we are among them in Washington D.C. We wish you continued good things. In Thank you, your Mike. World, you Steve are one Buck of the has. most talented guys I know, and I'm glad to be on this show with you. And I appreciate you having me. Thank you. That's Steve Buckhans for Oscar Best. Santana and Rob Spiewak, Mike O'Mara saying so long, everybody. Bye bye. Ciao ciao. Before you go, please make a mental note. Today's show was made possible by the TMOS bonus packages. You can secure yours right now by going to MikeOmeraShow.com and clicking on the red bonus banner. Buy it or give it. Either way, you're helping out TMOS, and that's a good thing. Thank you, and go in peace. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Uh, I could pull a better cartoon out of my ass. <laughs> hey, whoa! Wasn't that great, kids? If I thought you were my friend... I just don't think I could bear it. rock a bye baby, in the palm tree, when the wind blows. It's a category five hurricane!